from the trading floor of the NYMEX. I'm Jill Malandrino for the street. And Alan, we see a bit of a pop in oil today. Is that longer term or do you think this is just a blip and we still have some more downside pressure? Well, I think we have some downside, but not much downside. I think we're coming to a bottom here. 70 to 75 is my range for a bottom. We touched close to 75, 75, which is a big support number. So I don't think we have much more downside left. Do you think there'll be some volatility around the OPEC November 27th meeting? Well, yes, there is some volatility around it, and they're trying to figure out where to price oil. But something else is happening in the market that I'm watching. And what I'm noticing is that we're starting to draw down on heat and oil, and we're starting to draw down on lead of gas. So the lower prices, it's making a difference. More people are using them, getting rid of some of the supply that we have, a large amount of the supply that we have. And with that, it creates more of a bottom. How about natural gas? Because we're getting into the colder season in the north. In fact, we've seen a move in it this week. Is that just temporary around the weekend, or is it going to be higher going through the winter? I think it's going to go a little higher, but not much higher. I think this is too early of a move. We still have builds coming in. We don't have cold enough weather to get rid of the natural gas. So I, right now, fundamental-wise, think it's coming off and coming off hard. However, I think short-term we're going to see 460 before we do come off. Okay, thanks very much, Alan. Thank Let's you. switch gears and talk some metals. So we're seeing a bounce in the commodities today as the stock market's pulled back a bit. In terms of gold, is this just a short-term pop here and you're still looking for longer-term pressure? Uh, technically, we're definitely oversold. I mean, dropping uh, $80 in a week or so uh, certainly put us in an oversold situation. Uh, certainly had a capitulation moment overnight in which we traded a $10 spike to 11.30 and then a little buoyed once that uh, non-farm payroll number came out. So it's really because the dollar just continues to move higher. It's been unprecedented. The, certainly the, the dollar has been the story for the gold market since uh, June. And how about copper? Copper, it's its own animal. Uh, certainly today uh, we're up on uh, rumors of uh, the SRB, which is the Chinese Strategic Research Bureau, uh, purchased uh, over 700,000 tons of material. Uh, some of the people that I've spoken to don't believe that figure, but they have imported quite a bit and uh, they're expected to import some more uh, for their stockpiles. So that has put a floor and a little uh, bid in the copper today. So copper is a little bit different than gold, silver, palladium. It sort of moves on different metrics besides just interest rates, inflation, the dollar. There's more supply and demand involved. Right? Copper does what it wants to do all right. the time. It certainly moves when the money manager want to move it. Uh, once they're on board, then it does its own thing. Uh, the supply and demand picture has pretty much been taken out of the equation for a long time. Uh, it's been uh, Chinese consumption for the most part, and uh, every once in a while it gets caught up in the other basket of commodities, but uh, easily divorced. Okay. Thanks very much, Suki. From the trading floor of the NYMEX, I'm Jill Malandrino for The Street.